This video will be the first in a series of videos I will be making about the character of Mara Jade Skywalker. Mara Jade, aka the Emperor's Hand, aka the wife of Luke Skywalker in Star Wars Legends, is one of the seminal characters of the old EU. She featured in just about every single book series in the 90s, had her own comic book series, had tons of backstory, featured in video games, was all over in one of the faces of the Star Wars Legends universe. Now nearly a decade into Star Wars canon, we're seeing a ton of Star Wars characters from Legends in the old EU returning. Amongst the most prominent of these have been Grand Admiral Thrawn, who first appeared in the Thrawn trilogy, same as Mara Jade, created by Timothy Zahn. Grand Admiral Thrawn has not only made full appearances into canon with six books and two seasons of Star Wars Rebels, but he is going to be the main villain of the Ahsoka TV series and seems to be primed to be the main villain of whatever New Republic film Dave Filoni is working on, and with the film rumored to be titled Heir to the Empire, a reference to the first book in the Thrawn trilogy, it seems like there are a lot of characters that could be making their return. Fans have been speculating whether certain characters can come back, or how in canon we can fit so many different characters from the Thrawn trilogy still, but chief among these has been the character of Mara Jade Skywalker. You can find countless videos out there telling you why Mara Jade can't be canon anymore, or why the Disney era of Star Wars has ruined Luke Skywalker's character and won't make Mara Jade part of the story. I'm here to tell you you're flat out wrong. Mara Jade can not only still become a part of Star Wars canon, but she can be still a seminal piece in Luke Skywalker's story. The story of Luke Skywalker in Star Wars canon is a tumultuous one, but one we also don't know very much about. Luke has had appearances in two episodes of the live action TV shows in the Star Wars Disney Plus era. He appeared in season two, episode eight of The Mandalorian. We then pick up with him later on Asus, training Grogu in the ways of the Force. The next we see of Luke Skywalker in flashbacks in the rise of Kylo Ren. Not much can be gleaned from these flashbacks, he's just training these young Jedi apprentices in the ways of the Force. In the miniseries, Luke is seen going on missions with Ben Solo and Lor Santeca. In the novel Shadow of the Sith, we also see him go on more missions with Lor Santeca and Lando Calrissian, and confronting demons based in the dark side. We then don't pick up with Luke again until our flashback in The Force Awakens, and then of course his story revealed in The Last Jedi. So how much time is between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens? Well, that would be 30 years of time to tell Luke's story, and so far we only have one book, one comic book miniseries that features flashbacks of him, and two episodes of live action television. I say all this to say that Luke's story is not even close to being told. There's still plenty of room for a character like Mara Jade in his life. The relationship between Mara Jade Skywalker and Luke Skywalker is one of duality. Similar to the father-son relationship between Luke and Anakin, and eventually the relationship between Rey and Ben Solo, Star Wars constantly deals deals with the light side dark side duality and how the two sides of the force tend to bring two people together. In the Thrawn trilogy, Mara is haunted by the voice of Emperor Palpatine, telling her to kill Luke Skywalker. Mara fights through her obsession with killing Luke, eventually befriending and learning from him. Over the next 10 years, the two go on mission after mission together, conflict after conflict, and eventually begin to fall in love. There's a symbolism there that is remarkable for the galaxy. In Star Wars Union, the comic book miniseries by Michael A. Stackpole telling of the wedding of Mara Jade and Luke Skywalker, Leia emphasizes the symbolism of their relationship. Luke Skywalker, the new hope of the galaxy, the last Jedi remaining, the face of the Jedi Praxium, basically the face of all that's good in the galaxy, marrying a former Emperor's hand, an Imperial through and through an assassin for the Empire, and ultimately an Imperial redeemed. There's an important message there about unification in the galaxy, and one that I think can still definitely work in canon. Luke does see the good in people. He's constantly looking for reasons to trust or help others. He falls into trap after trap because of his blind loyalty to the light. Mara Jade is the complete opposite. She's an agent of deception, someone who kills in the shadows, someone who's more comfortable out of the spotlight. The two together bring out the best in each other. Mara compensates for a lot of Luke's farm boyisms, and Luke compensates for the pessimism at the heart of a dark assassin. The story of Luke Skywalker has always been one about reclamation. He continues to bring people back from the dark, and Mara might just be his ultimate success. In Legends, Luke is often described as having an aura around him. I believe that's still shown in canon in both Return of the Jedi, The Mandalorian, and The Book of Boba Fett. But how do we get from that all the way to him in The Last Jedi? From what we get in canon now in The Last Jedi and in The Rise of Kylo Ren, we're led to believe that he's just consumed by self-failure. People want him to be the savior of everything. While he seems to embrace it when he's younger, when he's older, he has a hard time putting that weight on his shoulders. Why is this the case? Well, 
Personally, I've always had the theory that this involves Mara Jade. In canon, I see Mara Jade and Luke meeting in a similar fashion. She needs to hate or want to kill Luke, and ultimately he turns her back to the light. She sees the greatness in him, the pure-hearted goodness that she just can't keep out of her head. They balance each other out perfectly, the light and the dark. Eventually, I see them getting married or having a close relationship together, maybe being engaged before the darkness happens. In the same way, Mara can be a late student of Luke's Jedi Academy. Mara doesn't join Luke's Jedi Academy right off the bat. She trains with Jedi like Kyle Katarn and Corrin Horn. She joins the Smuggler's Alliance and helps her friend Talon Karn on many missions. She has a small fling with Lando, which Timothy Zahn immediately retcons in the Hand of Thrawn duology. And she continues to serve her role as more of a freelance agent until eventually becoming a part of Luke's Jedi. Jedi Academy. After Luke proposes the idea of marriage in the Hand of Thrawn duology, she becomes much more involved with the new Jedi Order. I see the same path for her in canon as well. We could have them initially meet around the time of this current Thrawn trilogy adaptation we're seeing in Ahsoka and The Mandalorian. I said on a stream the other day, and I still hold by this, I think the way to discover the characters of Luke, Han, and Leia at this time is still through novels. We seem to forget in today's era of everything coming into live action, or things constantly being adapted from legends to live action that the Star Wars EU existed primarily in novels for 30 years. I would love a companion book series that goes along with the events of the Thrawn trilogy in Ahsoka to tell the story of where our big three is and why they're not involved in that conflict. In that story, we can introduce Mara Jade, and who better to write it than Timothy Zahn? As we continue to build on their flirtatious on-again, off-again relationship like they had in Legends in canon, and we creep closer and closer to a time that Mark Hamill can actually play the character, we could see the two characters exist in some type of show prior to the rise of Kylo Ren. Just to throw a fact out there, Ben Solo is 23 when he leaves and quote unquote destroys the Jedi Academy in 28 ABY. This means we have 24 years to work with between Return of the Jedi and the rise of Kylo Ren. We can discover Luke's Jedi Praxium in that time, see what his academy is like, discover the students themselves, see what variation of students. We know he trains younglings and apprentices, but we also don't know if he has a separate part of the academy that trains older Jedi. Maybe he takes on recovering inquisitors or older characters like in legends that have latent force sensitivity that they've hidden because of the dangers of the Empire. To reiterate, in the time between Return of the Jedi and 28 ABY, which in canon is the time when Kylo Ren destroys the Jedi Academy, in that same time between 5 and 28 ABY in Legends, all of these things happen. The first nine books of the X-Wing series, the courtship of Princess Leia, the Thrawn trilogy, the Dark Empire trilogy, the Dark Forces and Jedi Knight video game series, the Jedi Academy trilogy, the Callista trilogy, the Crimson Empire Trilogy, the Black Fleet Crisis, the Corellian Trilogy, the Hand of Thrawn Duology where Luke proposes to Mara, Star Wars Union where Luke and Mara get married, Survivor's Quest, the Junior Jedi Knight series, the Young Jedi Knight series, and 18 of the 19 New Jedi Order books. There is so much time to deal with new adventures for Luke and Mara. So much time to establish their relationship, have her come and go in Luke's life, and eventually let them settle down and get married. Luke and Mara don't get married until 19 ABY in Star Wars Legends. This is 10 years after the Thrawn trilogy and the events of the Mandalorian in canon. At that point, Ben Solo will be 19 years old. We can have them embarking on missions as a family. If we follow that same timeline and Luke and Mara get married in 19 ABY, that gives them 9 years before before Luke's Jedi Academy is destroyed. One of the other reasons I think Mara Jade is essential for Luke's character in Star Wars canon is because of her relationship to the dark side of the Force. One of the major things that a lot of fans dislike about The Last Jedi is Luke's obsession with the dark side. He sees it early on in Ben Solo, and he's afraid to let it flourish. It gets to the point where we see a very, very angry looking Luke Skywalker, one obsessed with his fear of the dark, standing over Ben Solo's bedside, sensing the thoughts within him, the connection to Snoke. This is ultimately what leads Ben to collapsing his hut on Luke Skywalker and eventually escape the Jedi Temple. Luke in Legends is more naive about the dark side. When Jason Solo turns to the dark, Luke has a hard time believing it's true. When Mara Jade is killed by Jason, he goes after Lumia, violently killing her in a rage. Maybe in canon we fix a bit of that flaw. Mara's connection to the dark side could help Luke see the darkness in Ben early, but like Legends, Luke could be unwilling to believe it. He puts it to the back of his mind until ultimately it destroys him and everything he worked for. But again, why is Luke so angry in that moment? I think there's a downfall, a spiral of events in Luke's life that lead him to that moment. 
everything could be perfect for Luke for 20 years, 25 years. He has problems, sure, but he defeats them, always comes out on top. He's happily married to the love of his life. His nephew is flourishing in the Jedi Academy. His friends are also flourishing, and everything just seems great. What if in the months leading up to the ultimate conflict between Ben Solo and Luke Skywalker, something happens to his perfect life? It could start with something minor, maybe an apprentice turns to the dark side, or one of his promising students is killed in battle. Something that hurts Luke personally, but isn't as affecting as maybe a death in the family. Until that death in the family happens. We know that Luke and Snoke had a conflict at some point. We haven't seen what happens there, but we do know Luke is the reason Snoke's face is scarred in The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. What if Snoke is responsible for the death of his wife? Snoke seems to be a character pulling strings throughout the galaxy far before it's revealed that he is working with the First Order. He's a dark force that Luke keeps coming in contact with, but maybe Luke can never actually put down. Ultimately, it becomes too late as Mara dies at his hands, prompting Luke to scar the Supreme Leader as the Supreme Leader escapes. In Luke's fury and depression after his wife dies, Luke becomes obsessed with the dark side. He knows of Ben Solo's connection to Snoke, and he knows that Mara had been warning him about Ben's pull to the dark. In a moment of weakness, Luke looks into the mind of Ben, sees that his naivete has let this go too far, that Ben is all but turned. This would then turn from a decisive moment out of despair rather than one out of just pure hubris. I think it makes the character of Luke Skywalker a bit more rounded and it makes his actions a bit more justifiable. Ultimately, what I'm getting at is that the Mara Jade and Luke Skywalker relationship really imprints how Luke looks at both the light side of the Force and the dark. In Legends, Mara is his ultimate success, someone who he not only turns from the dark side, but someone who hates him utterly and ultimately then marries him. It's the purest showing of Luke's goodness. He's able to turn almost everybody he cares about back to the light. But what if in canon we have the complete opposite version? Luke's constant attempts to do good continually put those people he loves in danger. He loses his wife. He could lose his nephew, the only son of his beloved sister and brother-in-law, to the dark side. He could lose his Jedi Academy, everything he's worked so hard to build. I think the piling of all of that stuff on top of Luke in the six month to year long time span, I think that gives a lot more justification for why Luke is so manic about the dark side and makes it a bit more powerful why he retreats away from the rest of the galaxy after one apprentice falls to the dark side. And let's also not forget we have six years in between the rise of Kylo Ren and The Force Awakens. He tries to reconcile with Ben. He takes on Snoke and loses. We don't know what he does in those six years. He doesn't just disappear immediately. Luke has to have done something at least at the beginning of those six years. But all in all this video is to say that Mara Jade is the key to Luke Skywalker. Their adventures, both good and bad, set him on the course for where he is going to be headed in The Last Jedi. The weight of those legacy expectations on his shoulders will weigh heaviest if he reaches the mountaintop and ultimately falls all the way down. Mara being that first warning voice about Ben, but Luke's Skywalker hubris being the thing that keeps him from seeing what's coming. All in all, we could have nearly 25 years of adventures with Luke and Mara. We can establish that same unbreakable relationship. And and similarly to how it is in Legends, it's broken from within. Whether it's Darth Cadis in Legacy of the Force, or Ben Solo's connection to Snoke in canon, the son of Solo is the reason for Mara's death, and ultimately the reason for one of the greatest tragedies in Luke's life. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I have a lot of theory videos coming, especially those related to the Thrawn trilogy, and characters that could possibly pop up into Ahsoka. I'm also reviving the How to Adapt series with a Mara Jade video. I'll be doing one for Jerus Sabayoth as well, and possibly Talon Card. The more and more we do these live streams, the more times you can ask us questions about what we think could happen here or there and I start to spitball story ideas the more and more I realize how much I want to do theory videos hope you guys are excited for all of that thank you so much for watching we still have plenty more content coming your way and keep an eye out on Star Wars lads for the latest on Ahsoka as we approach the two episode premiere of that series thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time